flame blade is weird. It's looking like a really powerful weapon. But the biggest problem with this blade, the only class that got access to it is Druid. But when playing as Druid, you probably want to use your wild shape forms and almost unlimited variety of spells, instead of wasting your actions on the attacks with the blade that got almost no scaling and fell off greatly in the late game. But I got a cool build for you. Insane damage. 100% on control spells. On all control spells. And if you think it's broken, you're goddamn right. But first of all, we need to create our character. Any race will work. My favorite is would have elf to get more movement speed. For cantrips, I choose turn whip and she le lay. She le la. She le la. English motherfucker, do you speak it? Soldier background, but you can pick any. And this start distribution. We go in with 8 strength, 14 dexterity, 16 constitution. If you like more armor class than HP, you can swap them. 8 intelligence, 10 wisdom, and 17 charisma. Wait, spot. Isn't wisdom is main casting attribute for druids? And with 10 wisdom, we will get only one prepared spell. Unacceptable! Relax, I'm just trying to make this build working as soon as possible. So just get your zero damage quarter stuff and try to use some turn whip with Shilala. You will easily escape the ship and be level 2. In a few minutes we will be super powerful flame blade. Wait, wait a minute. I'll teach you my recipe. What do you say, you wanna cook like me? After waking up, we are already changing our class to Paladin. Ancient Paladin will be a nice role-playing option, but his action to heal is really useless. That's why we're going for Vengeance Paladin. We wanna make broken build after all. Vengeance Paladin will get this awesome ability that you can cast and do additional damage based on your charisma. Spot, you telling me we picked 17 charisma just to have 3 additional damage? Oh my no god! I did it to become insanely powerful characters, even on level 2. And one shot my enemies. And it's insanely easy to do if you understand how the spells work. Pay attention, you just may learn something here. Our main kindrip is Shilele that will transform any club into 1d8 power weapon. That will use spellcasting ability modifier for attack rolls. And that's a bonus on the ability your class uses to cast spells. The ability is indicated on your character sheet with a star. I'm druid and star is on the wisdom. This means my attack with the club with Shilela will use wisdom. Right? Wrong. For some reason, we're using charisma. Is there something wrong with anything? Don't worry, I found out how this works. And it's really important for our build. For example, we pick Druid as level 1 with 17 charisma. If I try to cast Shilele and attack wizards, I will use a wisdom modifier with basically zero bonus. But as soon as we pick up class with different spellcasting ability, like charisma, for example, Paladin or Sorcerer, Shilele will start to use highest spellcasting ability, which is charisma for me. And this means on level 2 with one level in Druid and one level in Paladin, we can pick insanely OP weapon. It's Torch. Light clap, which means we can dual wield it. And Torch is always burning, which means we will do additional fire damage. Maybe we're looking a little bit stupid, but take a look at the damage. For our precious spell slot, I recommend getting Fairy Fire to get advantage on attack rolls against enemies. But considering our low wisdom, most of the time I'm just using a long strider for more movement speed. Then to make life easier, put your torches on the hot bar. Equip one torch and cast Shilele. And then do the same for the second one. Single torch will do 1d8 plus 3 damage and plus 1d4 from burning. And Inquisitor Might with bonus action can do additional 3 radiant damage. So our average damage will be 26. And that's pretty average number of hit points for enemies on Honor mod at this level. So it's grade school t-ball versus the New York Yankees. But Torch isn't fire blade, so let's level up a little bit. On level 3 I'm picking Guidance as my kinship, and we got additional prepared spell slot. I like to take Healing Ward with me to be able to pick up my allies from downstate with bonus action. On level 4 I pick one more level in Druid and finally unlock our favorite spell, Flame Blade. And I totally forgot about subclass. It's Circle of the Land and we pick Mountain on 
Doom level 4. And it's time to discuss flame blade mechanics. Everywhere we writing that it's scimitar. With bonus action we get the scimitar in our hand. It will do 3d6 fire damage. And it will slightly increase our damage output. But here's fun part. On character sheet it considered as normal scimitar with no bonus to attack roll. So this blade is still useless? In reality it's not normal scimitar. It's a spell. And as you know spells using spellcasting mobility modifier for attack rolls. And this means when we attack with scimitar we will use our wisdom. And yeah I got no wisdom. This means my chance to hit is almost zero. But I promised you broken build. So take a look. My Flame Blade using Charisma modifier for its attack roll. Is something wrong? Is there something wrong with anything? You probably want to know how to achieve this. Please. Continue. Instead of using highest spellcasting ability, like Shillelay, Flame Blade using last unique spellcasting ability modifier. This means if I take Paladin and then get one level in Druid, last unique spellcasting ability will be Wisdom and Spell Blade will use Wisdom. That's why I picked Druid on level 1 and then one level in Paladin to make Charisma my main spellcasting ability for Shillelay and Flame Blade. Just look, if I take one level in Wizard, my Flame Blade Blade will start using intelligence and I will get minus one penalty. So follow build carefully and you will become insanely powerful in Baldur's Gate 3. But before we can do it, there is one more really important mechanic to understand. I knew it, I fucking knew it. But it's really important to know, where will be our flame blade equipped if we are dual wielding? If you get anything in your offhand, it will always change this thing. So, if instead of dual wielding you use using shield, it will change shield and you will start dual wielding. That's why in first act I mostly used torch and shield when I'm fighting some easy enemies with low HP and using flame blade only against really strong enemies. Because our spell slot is really limited, we got only two spell slots to use for flame blade. But as land druid we can recover one spell slot of level 2. But that's more than enough to do 2-3 fights between each long quest. In really hard fights you can use mirror image. It will skyrocket our armor class and in a party enemy AI will possibly ignore us completely. Also you can start your fight as wolf and try to land exposing bite. This will make next attack against this target critical hit. And there will be no problem to defeat Act 1 with this setup, where you basically one shooting every enemy. As a useful stuff we can use in the fights from Druid Spellbook. There's two spells, first one is Moonbeam. A lot of guys don't like it because it's just 2d10 damage for level 2 spell slot. But in reality you're doing damage on the cast itself and also on the start of enemy turn. So we're getting 22 average damage and can recast the spell every turn without consuming spell slot while using our bonus action to attack with flame blade from offhand. Another very useful spell is hit metal. While it's using wisdom as uh, ability modifier and we got low wisdom, this spell is still awesome. There is tons of text but let me simplify it for you. We cast a spell and enemy need to complete constitution saving throw. If he succeeds, he will take damage. If he fails, he will drop his weapon. So there is no good option for our enemy and we can recast the spell without spell slots with bonus action until enemy is dead. Like that we will go through act 1 pretty easily. But upon reaching level 5 we need some kind of power spike. And we will get it by getting one more level in Paladin and finally getting our smite. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. And you will know my name is the Lord. As fighting style we pick in defense and last but really important mechanic we need to learn on this level. I know that was coming! First of all I recommend to go to your reactions and turn on all smiles with ask button. This will interrupt the game a little bit but we can precisely manage our smites. By doing just normal attack on hit I can decide do I want to use smite or not. But here's the tricky part with dual wielding flame blade. It will never prompt smites. So if you want to make two smites in one turn, keep a torch in the hand while other hand should be empty even without shield. This way our character will keep flame blade in the main hand while torch in the off hand. Now manually press on smite. If we miss we're not losing spell slot so don't worry. And when I lay my 
vengeance upon thee. With this power, we will approach Act 2 of the game by getting one more level in Paladin on level 6. By the way, there is text version of this build in my Discord, link in the description. But also this part of the game we will face one more problem. There will be lots of powerful weapons, and most importantly they will have enchantments to increase hit chance. Our flame blade can't be enchanted. But this broken stuff I will show you now will fix all these problems. By playing Vengeance Paladin on this level we will unlock Vow Enmity and Hunter's Mark. We are really interested in Vow Enmity. In D&D we pick a target and we will get advantage on every attack against them. Advantage gives more than 20% chance to hit. In Baldur's Gate 3 I can cast Vow Enmity on myself. This will give me advantage against every target I will try to hit with every weapon. So pre-fight routine is done. I'm drinking invisibility potion and going in. And I will start with Hunter's Mark. It will surprise my enemies and also will increase damage output of my weapons. Almost 100% chance to hit. 80 HP Ogre. Let me remind you, we are level 6 guy with a torch. And it's gone. And now we're finally in the Act 2, that's where we will become broken. So as you can see this build kicks in really early in the game. If you're interested what Paladin spells I'm using, none. We can use different smites, but most of the time it's just a waste of spell slots and bonus action. Also be smart and never do this trick with this build. You can talk with wizards and buy Hireling. Level him up and get Flame Blade. Then sell him back to Wizards and buy same Hireling again. And here we are. Unlimited Fire Blade that require no spell slots, no actions, bonus action, you can just wield it. The problem it's not scaling with your spellcasting modifier, it's just normal sword that using your strength. As sword it's not bad, but not for this build. Act 2 is place where you can get awesome gear. We're looking for any good medium armor, it doesn't matter which exactly. I like Shar armor from Shar temple. And with a shield we can get really solid armor class. And with mirror image we're basically unhittable. If you rescued tieflings you can get slightly worse version of this Helda's gloves from Daemon in Last Light Inn. Broodmother Revenge is amulet from Kaga from Act 1 and you're looking for any rings that give you additional damage on hit. Caustic Band will work, Strange Conduit Ring or other stuff. My favorite combination is Kalos Glow Ring from Temple of Shar and Coruscation Ring that you can find in Last Light in Prison. But all of this stuff will just increase our damage. To find single and most important item for our build we need to look in a cow. Look in the dark. You mean look in the dock? I mean open them up. Right inside this cow there is head of fire aquity and that's key item to make ourselves broken. I got this item from the start of act 2, but you can basically say I already beat the game. After getting level up we getting 2 points in charisma by picking feet and then on level 8 we getting one more level in paladin. This gives one more attack with our action. So what's so broken in this head? We got 2 weapons that doing fire damage. Now every time we inflict fire damage we will gain stacks of arcane aquity, which gives plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell difficulty class. And our fire weapons is magical weapons which kinda spell attack rolls. Another good way to get these stacks to gain this crossbow. It will give us scorching ray which is fire spell which is pretty fun way to just blast some fire damage and get full stacks in one turn. And now we will have 100 or almost 100% chance to hit our control spells against every enemy type. I like hold person because we can guarantee critical hit attack attacks on each hit. And like that we will easily transition into act number 3. After reaching hip size strength in lower city, go behind this building and find a wall, lock pick it or find another way to go in and meet the guy. You can buy next item from him or just lock pick chest behind him and get your brand new torch. That will inflict additional necrotic damage on hit. Probably you think our build is already broken, but I will break it even more by fixing our last issue. This is too fucked up for me even to think about. 
In last act we will get levels pretty fast and I pick Sorcerer as my next class. We can pick Wild Magic for fun, but to make it really strong, let's go with Draconic Bloodline and pick White Dragon to get Armor of Agathos. For spells we're going with Shield and Magic Missile just in case we need to finish someone off. And in total we will get 4 levels in Sorcerer. On second I get Twin Spell and Extended Spell. After unlocking level 2 spells we get in Scorching Ray and Quick and Spell Meta Magic. And on the last level we get in one more feat and we take Savage Attacker to increase our damage output. By picking Sorcerer I got a lot of spell slots and cool meta magic effects to increase power of my spells. And while I'm going into magic shop to get some spell scrolls and show you some broken stuff, you probably already typing in the comments. Hey Spot, it's awesome, but you get only 4 sorcery points and there's still not a lot of spell slots. It's impossible to use your meta magic. Right? Wrong. Low amount of sorcery points can be easily fixed by consuming our spell slots of lower levels to get more sorcery points. After spending all level 1 and level 2 spell slots, we will get 15 sorcery points. Wow, now we can do a lot of meta magic. But to cast spells, we need spell slots and we get no spell slots. One way to fix it is to find spell summoned amulet to gain additional spell slot of level 2 and shield of devotion to get spell slot of level 1. And instead of keeping these two additional spell slots, we can create more sorcery points from them. Unequip and equip them back and you will get your spell slots back. And then use unlimited sorcery points to create unlimited spell slots, but this method is definitely using bugs. Now I will show you another method that is completely legit and will work in any version of the game, even if previous method patched. Step number one, get a hireling and go to one of these two traders in Act 2 and 3 to buy all stock of potions of angelic reprieve. Level up your hireling once, this will refresh vendor's stock and buy more potions. Rinse and repeat, then you can respect it withers and do it as much as you like. By drinking this potion, character will fall asleep. And when he wake up, he will restore all spell slots of level 1 and 2. Do this few more times and here we are, we got 69 sorcery points. So we got unlimited spell slots, unlimited sorcery points, insane damage, but I totally forgot about most broken spell you will have. By playing Paladin you got spell Halt. It's using spell slot and it can be upcasted to affect more creatures. But most importantly it requires no concentration, so you just command people what to do and they will do what you want, because with full arcane equity you will have 100% hit chance of this spell. Start a fight by asking 5 enemies to stand still and do nothing. Then you can disable 5 more enemies with hold person by using quickened spell. Critical hit with every attack and just one shot them. And even that's not it. Remember I bought some spell scrolls. Chance to succeed works on them too, so I get 100% chance to put these creatures into stone. Because I use twin spell and can cast these spells on two creatures at one time. They get no chance and will become stones and I will destroy them. Also you can have Tiefling Hireling in your party to unleash fire at him and get easy stacks of arcane equity. One of the hardest bosses in the game? Not a problem. Just make him stand still and unleash critical strikes. You got a trade wizard, just make enemies into gold. As always, with 100% chance. That's just hilarious and also perfectly balanced. Like dancing with your foes and skipping turns because you don't care. Because after dance your foe will become your ally with 100% chance as always. Win fights even before they start, keeping all enemies in control, unleashing crazy amount of damage at the same time. This build can do all of this. And I hope you enjoyed this video, so drop a like and watch other cool videos on the screen right now. I guess you will enjoy them too.